Thank you very much, uh, Ren Stefan, for your wonderful presentation. The walkthrough was an incredible, incredible learning experience uh, in so many different dimensions. And I am sure uh, a lot of the participants uh, of this webinar have uh, quite a few questions to ask because I've been uh, receiving uh, different questions and comments in the chat box. Now uh, we shall move to the question and answer session. So I have a couple of questions and some people are raising their hands as well. So we will go uh, chronologically. So the first question, uh, Ren Stefan, is by uh, Ren STS Lepcha. And he asks if uh, there uh, are any relation between the lecture script and the South Indian script, example, Tamil, et cetera, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, a, a, a layman's uh, point of view, you know? So he sees a certain similarity. So he's asking uh, whether uh, you see any relationship between the lecture script and certain South Indian scripts like Tamil. Yes, unfortunately, I'm, I'm no specialist on, on South Indian scripts, uh, I must admit. Um, it looks like uh, Rong Aring has certain similarities with uh, Tibetan. Tibetan, which is itself against, uh, again, a uh, derivative of uh, Brahmi script. But um, I always considered lecture script as something uh, special and something on its own and i never felt the, the need to to uh, search for older older links so i'm i'm probably the wrong one to answer that question really uh in depth right thank you so much oh uh, we have another question from uh chung sung lepcha so this is a two part so the first part is uh i'll, I'll read the question uh, what is lecture script known as? Okay, and the second one seems interesting. Uh, so the question is: um, Is uh, Panu Munsalong a reincarnation of Guru uh, Padma Sambhav? Again, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't. I don't think he he was a reincarnation of uh, Guru Nimpoche because uh, the, I just came across uh, prophecies made by Guru Nimpoche that Mensalon would await uh, the Yuxam, the, the three Tibetans, to show them uh, Maya Liang. But uh, I've never heard of, um, of that notion that, that he could be a reincarnation of, of uh, Guru Rinpoche. On the other hand, I found uh, a very interesting um, hint uh, recently, and that is that um, Sanche Pema Yangtze, the, the uh, premier monastery of Sikkim, considered the uh, Kongchen Bonting, Sandup Daso, to be a reincarnation of Mensalon. Renu uh, Nandini Bhattacharya has also raised a hand. So, Renu, if you had anything to ask. Um, thank you. Thank you, Jordan. Yes, um, actually, I am not a linguist, not at all, but I am a historian. So, I have some questions relating to history. Um, one thing I, I gathered, just um, whether I'm right or wrong, you you please correct it, that you suggest that Lepcha script is a product of Tibetan intervention. So, um, or if not, was there before um, the Tibetan came in, in Sikkim, was there any Lepcha script? This is my first question. Um, because um, there is no straightforward answer. Sprig has written a lot about it, but I mean, I it mean, is in a is twilight, in a twilight zone. zone. This is one this thing. This is one thing. And secondly, my question is Arthur Koning, his, um, his uh, statements, his, his ideas, and his presentations, 
his opinions and views um what i understood after reading several times is lopsided so if you if you use some of his opinions and views do you think that it has to be kind of um cross examine about script and about the lecture because he very clearly he said that lectures are a dying race this is my i mean this is a uncomfortable question but i am bit intrigued as i used to do and used still do now I do some research on um the lecture community and my third question is uh, there are some efforts kp thompson like sonam sering lepcha um and like many other people they also try to revive the script and the linguistic tradition so um i just want to mention it thank you thank you very much yes uh, i think we are in full agreement um i don't think i said that the um, tibetan uh, lecture script was was uh, initiated or done by by tibetans so that you must have got uh, got wrong i firmly believe but it's a belief we have no proof uh, lacking all the documents i firmly believe that's a creation from within the community itself and it's uh, something of its own i think that uh, the approach by artifoding was a revolutionary one he really liberally inquired and examined the uh, traditions that were ever around and i do not know whether he is right i do not know whether i'm wrong um it's as i uh, said it's just a matter of sounding plausible or not for the third one that wasn't the question if i understood that right it was just a, a statement uh, which uh, is absolutely uh in my sense i know there are many lectures doing a lot and um i just listed the um western western contributors to to uh, highlight their merits in the whole story but uh, i virtually don't want to downplay or diminish all the achievements uh, and and contributions done by the lecturers themselves so there in i'm in absolute agreement with yourself thank you very much madam thank you no no i didn't mean anything i just reminded and finally <laughs> i just want to mention that now in sikkim university students can uh, write their thesis in dutch language i i'm sure you know that but um, well uh, i i feel very happy about it that's all sure yes, thank you very much uh, ma'am for your question renew for your question and thank you very much ren for your response uh we have two uh, hands that are raised one is from uh, ren samar sinha but before uh, i go to ren samar sinha i want to uh, go to ren uh, chuksung lecture uh, thank you ren come to ren stephen and thanks to the organizer first I am Chuksung Lepcha from Sikkim. I am a vice president of Sikkim Literary Association, uh, elected very currently. Though I have uh, very little knowledge about language and uh, literature, but I have uh, uh, some queries. About. One of them has been cleared uh, by Ren uh, Stephen. My next question, which was put on by Ren Jordan, but uh, I could not get the answer. What is the wrong script known as first? Yes, uh, Ren Stefan. So uh, Ren Chuksung uh, essentially wants to ask, uh, what is the wrong script actually known as? Or yes, yes. Any... Uh, as far as I know, there are different uh, different terms for for the same. Some folks just uh, use uh, Lo Tsong as a term for the for the script as a whole. Mm -hmm. Some uh, speak of uh, Ming Zat, 
others call it uh, uh, Rong Chuming. In the Unicode uh, standard, it's uh, named wrong, and in brackets, uh, lip chop. I, I that's, hope that's this, all I can tell you. <laughs> I, I hope this answers your question, Ren uh, Chuksum. Uh, there is months long script out here in Sikkim. And in some dictionary, we found wrong a ring, only wrong a ring. So my next question is, though you have cleared uh, who invented the lecture script, but then I have some queries. Uh, as per the uh, gazetteer of Sikkim by H.S. Risri, uh, wrong script was invented by Chakdor Namgel. And then the another another one is, Ren Sonam Chiring. Yeah, Ren, we are losing you again. So I think we can go ahead with the with the first question. Well, well what, what I can say uh, is about um, um, the report by Risley in the Gazetteer of Sikkim. Just a second. One more book uh, by Nima Nilmu in Lepta uh, Jatiko uh, Utpatiko Katha. He mentions uh, some members of the committee who invented the lecture script, uh, and the members are Dungrap. Gole, Sayun, Doring, and Dolep. So, can you uh, have any comment on this, or is it the Munsalong he himself who invented the lecture script? Thank you. Well, again, I must be uh, <laughs> I must be clear that I do not know. I just uh, deliberated on what I regard as being probable and other uh, theories uh, that look improbable to me, but how it actually was, I do not know, because I wasn't alive at that time. So um, that's a point we, we, we certainly can't find a final answer to. We are here just uh, in, the, in a field of speculations. Absolutely. To the, the uh, to the report of, of Riesley in the uh, Gazetteer of Sikkim, I just uh, must say he is citing the uh, royal history of Sikkim. And the invention by Chakdor uh, Namgyal is the version of the history of Sikkim. Um, you, to me, it doesn't, it, it, sound, doesn't it doesn't sound convincing. But again, I can be wrong. Uh, yeah. yeah. Should yeah. we, Should uh, we move, move on to, move to the next, the next uh, uh, question? question. Yeah. Ren Samar has been raising his hand. Been, uh, raising his so hand. I think we should uh, give him uh, so an opportunity to ask the question. Yes, Ren. I may I request the rest to kindly turn off your microphones. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jordan, for this opportunity for providing us. First, I would like to thank the, all, all the organizers. I have just started to explore lang uh, Lepcha language, though I was interested for a very long period of time, for more than 20 years, but I recently started to explore with a student uh, in Sikkim University. I'm basically a linguist by training, and I do teach linguistics in Sikkim University. And since my interest basically in linguistics started with Lepcha, but I'm unfortunately starting from this season onwards. So, so far, my basic understanding of Lepcha is very uh, little. Uh, but what I know for, for certain is that Lepcha, they do have a syllabic system of writing. So, if you look into the very first case of Tamil, Tamil also derived from Brahmi, which is also the core of is Akchar. In Indian tradition, it is called Akchar, or you can call it as syllable. Whereas Tibetan is also Akcharic system or Akchara based system. So therefore you can see at one level at the very high level of abstraction between these two scripts, they are both uh, syllabic system. That's why in um, uh, Lepcha we do have Lazong, the syllabic scheme and all. So you can find a kind of a similarity between two at the very high level, but the, at the level of physical shape, size and forms, as well as stacking. I don't know much about the stacking, but I know a little bit about if it is in coda position and if it is uh, unreleased, it seems to be 
uh, have uh, have a stacking even of the consonants which is not very unique because even devnagari has got similar things so it's it looks like at a system that uh, is a brahmi based uh, or at least evolved from a brahmi uh, because of a syllabicity otherwise had it been then lazo won't be there so that's a one fact and regarding uh, lepcha script uh, we explored in sikkim university first sitmo Uh, uh, and I was already working on this uh, glacian, but we found that it is not uniquely compatibility, and we were not able to use it. Uh, we we plan to write it our thesis also in LaTeX, so we were trying to explore it. So we found that SL Minjat works well with G LaTeX, because the university students need to write their thesis. So we are thinking of introducing LaTeX to them. So other funds might work, but then again we started. Uh, I think SL fonts will be much better, though we don't have any association with SL in Sikkim University. But at least for linguistic resources, we do use all over the world. So that's uh, I think one area. But I think uh, Stephen can tell me more about what is the actual system. Is it the Abiguda system? Has it developed outside Akshariq system, and it has become an Abiguda system, or what is the kind of a writing system they do have? It's, a, it's definitely considered an uh, Abugida system. Yes. Is it not Acharic? Because Acharic is something different from Abiguda. Okay, um, I'm I'm not a specialist. But what I can tell you is that uh, Unicode and the the consortium uh, there are a lot of of highly specialized uh, experts. In the community, they consider it it as uh, Abu Gida. Okay, okay, thank you, thank yeah, you. I hope I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Then uh, we also had Renu uh, Ripandi Lepcha who had raised her hand. Thank you, thank you. Uh, coming more to all, I uh, Stefan, thank you so much for that uh, very uh, detailed sort of uh, development of typescripts happening currently. Uh, you spoke about uh, this erratic. Uh, Say lecture collation. Yes, yes, lecture collation happening. So, uh, what would be your suggestion in terms of overcoming such erraticism in terms of TypeScript? That was one part of the question, and I am so sorry I joined very late because I couldn't get off uh, a previous obligation. I was wondering whether, uh, since you have uh, you are so well read, you have so much resources at your disposal. I was wondering if you had come across any numbers which. Sort of uh, because Namtars, you know, uh, were initially handwritten, so there were a lot of variations happening there as well, not just in TypeScript, which you explained that certain variations are coming about. But uh, I was wondering where it concerns the Namtars. Could the Namtars be one of the reasons why all these erraticism has occurred because it depended on the handwriting of uh, the scribe? So I was wondering whether. <laughs> were creeping up because of that. Okay, uh, erratic collation is just a fact. It's it's inborn. It's it's the system, and erratic just uh, is from the point of view of the font developer. That means that to cluster these uh, syllables is quite complicated and doesn't. Um, can't be compared with uh, the clustering in other lang uh, languages or other scripts. So that's why I called it erratic. But that's a, a, a purely a technical uh, view on the on the matter. The collation, the collation is given. The collation uh, exists like this, and uh, I see nothing wrong in it, and uh, that, that's fine. That's a lecture script. But for us font developers, it's uh, uh, quite a challenge to to get that done. So, would say uh, because Lazong and even uh, the way we write script, how we follow the strokes, would that help? In terms of font developers, take on that uh, say uh, cue. In terms of uh, this should be followed. You sh you should write the akub first or the uh, I mean first whatever it is. If you follow that, would that kind of uh, do away with the erraticism that occurs, or wouldn't that be helpful at all? Uh, no, again, uh, that erratic erraticism is is absolutely okay, and it's system inherent. 
So you 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 can't, and you don't have to change that. It's uh, again, it's it's really only the difficulty to uh, emulate or to create that in in computer code. That's that's the difficulty. But uh, it's it's absolutely clear <laughs> the, the the order of of writing is given. So we first write the uh, the uh, initial letter. Uh, usually called amu in uh, in lecture and then we add the uh, the vowel signs and then come the medials maybe and finally the the finals uh, that is given and that's that's absolutely okay it's just the placement the placement in the cluster that is uh, quite tricky to get it done in computer code I hope that uh, answers your question, Renu. Uh, thank Can you. Ask another uh, question in the meanwhile. Yes, okay. Uh, uh, Stefan, I just wanted to know in terms of uh, subject matter of the Namthars, there seems to be a large debate uh, as to what the Namthars contain. So, uh, this is, I know it's not related to uh, the TypeScript uh, topic that you were discussing today, but I was wondering whether you came across any Namthars which were very different in terms of dealing with the subject matter that. The current existing Namthars deal with. So usually these are all uh, they are considered to be, say, uh, copied from uh, or a translation of uh, Buddhist manuscripts. But I was wondering if you came across any uh, Namthar which has a different subject matter altogether. We must be clear that um, historically I spoke of Namthars in the Tibetan sense, while in Lepcha Namthar has a slight different uh, meaning, a broader meaning. It means uh, old uh, old uh, text generally. Now, um, of all the lecture texts I know and I've come in touch with, I'm of the opinion that uh, the Lotzong is definitely the oldest one. It's purely lecture. There is no trace of Buddhist influence uh, to be found in the Lotzong. And uh, for me, it's the arch, arch book of, of uh, lecture literature. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Ray. OK, uh, I will now uh, open the floor to uh, just three questions, because uh, I think we're closing down on a time limit. Uh, Ren Charles, are you there? Yeah, can yes. You hear me, Dr. Jordan? Uh, yes, I'm not a doctor yet in the process, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Kamrimo, uh, Renju, Stefan. Uh, it's a very simple question that I have. Uh, it's You said the glyphs are causing a problem in the intonation uh, between the two varieties of uh, fonts that are developing. Uh, the basic, the only question that I have is. Are the sounds compatible or can it be represented by the IPO, IPA, International Phonetic Alphabets? Yes. Uh, of course it can. Of course it can. However, you have to have uh, an experienced speaker to really translate uh, uh, a text just written in, in lecture uh, script into uh, a really perfect IPA. Uh, script. IPA, for those who don't know, uh, is a Latin script that um, exactly gives the pronunciation of the words. The different sounds from o, o, u, u uh, are, are clearly differentiated there. But it would require an experienced lecture, speaker, lecture, reader, uh, to transcribe that into IPA, but of course doable. Thank you oh, very much for your response. I think uh, Ren James has also raised his hand. Um, this is quite a simple question because if you look up Google and Wikipedia, you will always find that the lecture language has been derived uh, from the tibeto burman um, stream. It is supposed to be a Tibeto-Burman language. But after this seminar 
and what Ren Stefan personally thinks. I think this Google and Wikipedia needs a rewriting, a correction as to the derivation of lecture language from the Tibeto Burman stream. Am I correct, Ren? No, my friend, you are wrong. <laughs> Tibet Burman means a, a large family of languages, uh, oh. which, which, which includes uh, Eastern Chinese languages, uh, Assamese languages, uh, Tibetan languages, certain dialects uh, spoken in Nepal, and um, Tsongkhe, Loke, and uh, Rong, Aring as well. So that's a large family. That's that's uh, uh, a group of languages, and Lepcha is uh, definitely is at the right place in this language family. Okay, as a Tibet, so it is well. Uh, so it is well placed in the Tibeto Burman group. Am I right? Yes. Yes. Right. Okay. okay. Thank mm. you. Thank you, Ren. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Pleasure to meet you, James. Okay, so I think we've uh, approached... Same uh, here, same here. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Are we done with the exchanges? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I think we've approached the end of uh, the question and answer session. Mm -hmm.